Hi, I'm Dr. Heather Balch, and I am one of the internal medicine hospitalists here at the University of Utah Hospital. I'm here today to talk to you about rounds in the 21st century. This presentation today is based off of work done by myself, Dr. Casey Gretick, Dr. Nathan Warner, and Dr. Paulina Kukureva. Over the last 15 years, the use of the electronic medical record has become an essential part of the daily work of physicians. However, physicians learners like medical students and residents are typically not taught how to most efficiently integrate these systems into their workflow. Physicians spend most of their day on the computer. In fact, residents now spend 40 to 50% of their day working on the computer. Given this, it is imperative that we teach our learners how to best interact with the electronic medical record. When the electronic medical record was first implemented, this was in the era of desktop computers. And the way in which we round and pre-round has changed little since that implementation. However, there has become an increasing availability of, of mobile electronic devices like tablets and laptops with which we could interact with the electronic medical record. The rounds and pre-rounds have changed little since I started medical school about 15 years ago. And this scene here I can imagine is um, pretty common to some of you. There's a whole team um, this guy here is presenting off of paper documents, um, and our, some people are paying attention to him, some people are kind of lost in their own work. This guy looks like he'd rather be anywhere else. Um, but you can see that there is maybe one laptop, but otherwise still all paper-based. And this is an example of what we would call traditional batched rounding or, or with a batched workflow. So a batched workflow is when the intern or resident comes in and does pre-round, so they look up their patients before rounds. Typically, they would sit at their desktop in their team room and they would review all the labs, all the vitals, all the notes for all of their patients. Then they would go and see all of their patients, come back to the team room, maybe enter a few things into the computer, but most of what they've already reviewed has been written down. They then go and do a rounds with it, attending and the rest of the team. And oftentimes they present off of paper, either handwritten or their printed out note. And then they take notes during rounds. And at the end of rounds, they go back to their computer and try and remember all of the information that they have gained throughout the morning and put it back into the electronic medical record in the form of their progress notes and orders. We identified this area of op these areas of operational waste in our rounding system and in internal medicine and did a pilot project to try and improve efficiency of the residents. We, uh, previous institutions um, at Virginia Mason has done a study where they do a lot of their um, quality improvement projects off of Toyota's lean model of production. So Toyota's lean model of production seeks to identify operational waste um, which they define as any activity that doesn't serve the valid requirements of the customer or non-value adding activities. So if we apply this to medicine, we can look at all of our activities and say, do these activities contribute meaningfully to learning or patient care? Um, there are seven areas of operational waste and um, their time on hand, transportation, overproduction and overprocessing are some of the most common areas of operational waste in medicine. Um, Toyota, one of their main tenements um, of their lean production system is one piece flow. So with this one piece flow, all work for a single production unit is completed before implementation of work on the next unit. So this results in less waiting, less information decay, less travel of the units. This can be applied to medicine as well. And many of these areas of operational West address this one piece flow. So an example of time on hand is when you're waiting for inputs. So this could be patients and families waiting for physician visits, residents or other clinicians and patients waiting for tests, images and prescriptions, or residents and ward staff waiting for attending staff. In the area of transportation, this isn't necessarily just moving of patients, although that is included. Um, it's also can be information traveling from isolated process villages. So um, this in the, in the area of electronic medical record, this could be unnecessary data transfer between the electronic medical record and paper records, um, like for rounds or for handoffs. Overproduction is producing more than is needed or generating unnecessary inventory. So an example in graduate medical education would be separate intern resident attending pharmacy rounds um, or also doing teams outside the rounds and then going into the patient's room and repeating everything at the bedside. 
over processing um, is performing more operations than are necessary to make a product that meets the customer's needs. So this can be added tests and procedures due to communication and coordination problems. Other quick examples of stock on hand is unnecessary inventory. So this could be um, things that you prepare for one time use, such as scut sheets. Um, movement is can be seen with physicians traveling between floors. And transfer and um, defective products could be seen in passing defects down to a coworker, um, such as unsafe and variable handovers. We designed a project where we used one team as an intervention team and we um, gave them rounding and flow or one piece continuous flow model. And then we used the two other teams as control teams. With the intervention team, they were all given mobile laptops on computer stands and were given a recommended workflow for rounding with one piece or continuous flow. We called it rounding in flow. So with rounding in flow, the intern takes their computer and goes to see their first patient. They do computer pre-rounds on just that one patient. Then they go in, examine the patient, get the subjective history, come out and enter all of that information into their note. We ask them to try and write down as little as possible during their pre-rounding. They then go into the next patient and do the same process. We then had a separate piece of flow for attending rounds where the attending would come. The teams would take all three of their laptop computers. One intern would present their patient. The team would go in and see the patient. They would come out. And while the next intern was presenting their patient, the first intern finished up the work for the first patient. So that included signing their note and um, calling all consults. The senior resident put in orders on their laptop during rounds with a verbal readback before the end of the patient. This way, all of the tasks were completed for one patient prior to moving on to the next. Of note, we asked the residents to write down as little as they felt comfortable and to present directly from their computers. The advantages of rounding in flow are less waiting, less information reacquisition, and less information decay. You're much, more, you're much less likely to forget your physical exam if you write it down right after you perform it. Interestingly, one of our more senior faculty members pointed out that this is very similar, that rounding and flow is very similar to the old style of rounding pre-electronic medical record. In those days, they would collect all the patient's charts, put them on a cart, and wheel the cart from patient to patient. While they were seeing the patient, they would complete the note and the orders for the patient, and then the tasks for the day would be complete. Our current rounding and flow is a throwback to the old pre-electronic medical record style of rounding. We evaluated the outcome of our intervention with three different studies. The first was a time and motion study. During this, we had a research assistant follow the residents for um, seven residents on the control team and seven residents on the intervention team. The total direct observation time was 160 hours. Our results from this were non-significant given the small sample size, but there was a small trend towards less time on the computer, more time with patients, and more time on education. The second way that we evaluated our intervention was with a novel way of um, analyzing electronic medical record data. So we analyzed 2,530 progress notes and 672 discharge summaries and discharge orders, as well as 12,238 daily orders. We looked to see at what time, um, what percentage of those tasks were completed during the time allotted for rounds, with the assumption that if more things could be completed during rounds, then there would be the, the interns were being more efficient. So you can see in the, the red is the rounding in flow with the laptops and the blue is the traditional. You can see on the top one that residents place progress notes more often during rounds in the control or in the, in, in the computer team. The discharge orders were placed slightly later, but it was later, but it was a non-significant finding. And then the um, daily orders were placed 36% of the time during rounds in the computer group and 33% of the time in the control group. Lastly, the intervention group, 94% of discharge summaries were signed within 24 hours versus 79% in the control group. So that was a significant finding for um, patients in the, who had the, or for, sorry, for residents who had the computer. Lastly, the third way that we evaluated our intervention was through a resident survey. We also surveyed senior residents and um, attendings. 
In the resident survey, 70% of patients in the computer group thought that orders discussed on rounds were always placed before 1230 versus 23% from the control group. A non-significantly higher percentage of respondents from the intervention group um, reported their progress notes were done before 1230. They were always able to leave the hospital by seven and they were able to see their patients a second time in the afternoon, always or most of the time. Also, more of them felt that they knew their patients extremely well or very well, felt better prepared on rounds, and wrote down less than half of the information required for rounds as opposed to putting it in the computer. One comment from an intern was that they felt much more efficient. I didn't have to write out all the information on a piece of paper I needed to present on rounds. All my notes were prepped before rounds, and then I could use them to present on my patients straight from my computer. I actually felt like I knew my patient's information better because I had more time to see them and think about them because I wasn't worried about the format I was going to use to present information on rounds. I knew I'd have my computer with all the info I needed. One of the limitations with our project was that sometimes the computers would lose internet connection between units and um, the battery started to die in the computer so they needed to be plugged in towards the end of rounds. This is one of the quotes from one of our attendings. Whether we like it or not, computers are critical to patient care. Having mobile functioning computers during rounds allows us to look up clinical information more readily, place orders earlier and more accurately, and keep our teams together. As such, efficiency, patient care, and teaching opportunities are all improved. In summary, change is hard, especially change in something that has so long been tradition in medicine. However, in an environment that is constantly requiring more of our trainees, it is essential to eliminate activities done out of habit and those that do not contribute meaningfully to learning or patient care. Teaching trainees to efficiently interact with the electronic medical record and setting the expectation that computers will be an integral part of rounds as they are already an integral part of our daily clinical lives will reduce operational waste in graduate medical education. Thank you.